Hugh Michael Jackman AC is an Australian actor. Beginning in theater and television, Jackman landed his breakthrough role as Wolverine in the X-Men film series, a role that earned him the Guinness World Record for longest career as a live-action Marvel character, until 2022. Wikipedia Born, October 12, 1968, age 55 years, Sydney, Australia Spouse, Deborah Lee Furness, M. 1996, to 2023 Children, Oscar Maximilian Jackman, Ava Elliott Jackman Parents, Christopher John Jackman, Grace McNeil Siblings, Ralph Jackman, Sonia Jackman, Zoe Jackman, Ian Jackman Awards, Full List Hugh Michael Jackman is an Australian actor, singer, multi-instrumentalist, dancer, and producer. Jackman has won international recognition for his roles in major films, notably as superhero, period, and romance characters. He is best known for his long-running role as Wolverine in the X-Men film series, as well as for his lead roles in the romantic comedy fantasy Kate and Leopold, 2001, the action horror film Van Helsing, 2004 the drama The Prestige and the Fountain, 2006, the epic historical romantic drama Australia, 2008, the film version of Les Miserables, 2012, and the thriller Prisoners, 2013. His work in Les Miserables earned him his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor and his first Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical or Comedy in 2013. In Broadway theater, Jackman won a Tony Award for his role in The Boy from Oz. A four-time host of the Tony Awards themselves, he won an Emmy Award for one of these appearances. Jackman also hosted the 81st Academy Awards on February 22, 2009. Jackman was born in Sydney, New South Wales, to Grace McNeil, Greenwood, and Christopher John Jackman, an accountant. He is the youngest of five children. His parents, both English, moved to Australia shortly before his birth. He also has Greek, from a great-grandfather, and Scottish, from a grandmother, ancestry. Jackman has a communications degree with a journalism major, from the University of Technology Sydney. After graduating, he pursued drama at the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts, immediately after which he was offered a starring role in the ABC TV prison drama Corelli, 1995, opposite his future wife Deborah Lee Furness. Several TV guest roles followed, as an actor and variety compare. An accomplished singer, Jackman has starred as Gaston in the Australian production of Beauty and the Beast. He appeared as Joe Gillis in the Australian production of Sunset Boulevard. In 1998, he was cast as Curly in the Royal National Theatre's production of Trevor Nunn's Oklahoma. Jackman has made two feature films, the second of which, Erskineville Kings, 1999, garnered him an Australian Film Institute nomination for Best Actor in 1999. Recently, he won the part of Logan slash Wolverine in the Brian Singer-directed comic book movie X-Men, 2000. In his spare time, Jackman plays piano, golf, and guitar, and likes to windsurf. Family Spouse Deborah Lee Furness, April 11, 1996, present, separated, two children. Children Oscar Maximilian Jackman Ava Elliott Jackman Parents Grace McNeil, Greenwood Christopher John Jackman Relatives Ralph Jackman, Sibling Ian Jackman, Sibling Sonia Jackman, Sibling Zoe Jackman, Sibling Half-Sibling, Half-Sibling Trademarks Ruggedly Handsome Features Renowned for his persuasive American accent. The role of Wolverine in the live-action X-Men films. Muscular physique. Deep resonant voice. Deep resonant voice. Nice guy reputation. Trivia. Hugh credits his good friend Russell Crowe with catapulting his career into superstardom. After Crowe turned down the lead in X-Men, 2000, he personally recommended Jackman to director Brian Singer for the part. He is terribly nearsighted and has extremely blurry vision when he isn't wearing contacts. Even when hosting the Tonys and Saturday Night Live, 1975,
Jackman memorized almost everything he had to say so he wouldn't have to struggle to read. Started his own movie production company, Seed Productions, with his friend John Palermo. They produced Deception, 2008, X-Men, The Last Stand, 2006, and The Greatest Showman, 2017. Frequently gets offered roles based on comic books. He was offered Daredevil, 2003, Hulk, 2003, Iron Man, 2008, Mr. Fantastic in Fantastic Four, 2005, and Jonathan Kent in Superman Returns, 2006. He undergoes intense physical training each time he's played Wolverine. When in peak physical condition, he can bench press well more than 300 pounds. Quotes On turning down the chance to play Richard Gere's character in the Harvey Weinstein-produced film Chicago, 2002, I thought I was too young for the role. You have some 34-year-old guy up against Catherine Zeta-Jones and Renee Zellweger and it becomes a different movie. At one point, Harvey was telling me they were thinking of Kevin Spacey, and have told him, that's exactly right. You should hire him. Then I was in New York, when the movie opened and the queue was around the block. I sat down and thought that I had probably made the biggest mistake, but I still honestly think that it was the right thing to do. I still think I was too young for that part. Finally something my family can be proud of. Now I meet people with full-color Wolverine tattoos on their backs. Thank God I did okay, because I think if I hadn't, they'd spit on me in the street. On his role of Wolverine. There is something very secretive about the way they cast that role. I've never had an official call asking, are you interested or not, but there's no guy I know who wouldn't want that role, and that includes me. Anyone who says otherwise is lying. On the Now, November 2004. Open spot for the next James Bond. On comic books, I never read comics as a kid, and when I was slipped the comics under my trailer door, Brian Singer didn't want us to read them. He was very frightened that we would come out with these 2D characters, and I was amazed at how helpful they were, the images more than the story. The images, and how they capture emotion or an action sequence in just, say, three images. I have to say I used them as inspiration for some of the fighting stances or techniques. The way Wolverine stands and how he looks. On Wolverine video game, I didn't do the motion capture work, I didn't do any of that. I don't know if they've used my voice or not, they probably have. I did a lot of recordings on the first movie for dolls and video games, so they probably just used the same stuff. On his action figure, people can stick pins in it, put in the freezer. It's far more dangerous than a video game. On playing Wolverine, the character I play is actually only 1.6 meters, 5 feet 3 inches. Before I had any kind of acting profile I was encouraged to lie about my height. I was told to say I was about 6 foot, 1.83 meters, tall. I was worried about it when I first had my audition because pleasing fans of the franchise is important. My height was brought up on the internet. They didn't think it was right. A lot of people who never met me think I'm very short. James Marsden, Cyclops, who's only 10 centimeters, 4 inches, shorter than me, was put on boxes and platforms in our scenes together. You'll notice that every character in X-Men, 2000, looks taller than me. I've always felt that if you back down from a fear, the ghost of that fear never goes away, it diminishes people. So I've always said yes to the thing I'm most scared about. The fear of letting myself down, of saying no to something that I was afraid of and then sitting in my room later going, I wish I'd had the guts to say this or that, that galvanizes me more than anything. Acting is something I love. It's a great craft that I have a lot of respect for. But I don't think it's any greater challenge than teaching eight-year-olds or any other career. In my life, I try not to make it more important than it is, and I just hope that rubs off on the people around me. Becoming a father, I think it inevitably changes your perspective of life. I don't get nearly enough sleep. And the simplest things in life are completely satisfying. I find you don't have to do as much, like you don't go on as many outings. I have shocking teeth. I'm being a little facetious, I just went to the dentist the other day, and he looked at my teeth and went, Oh, my God, you've got gray teeth. Joking about being selected Most Sexiest Man as People Magazine's Annual Choice, 2008, 
I think we ran a very strong campaign and I'm not proud of it, I can admit it now. We're the first ones to run a negative campaign and we spent years bringing Clooney, Pitt, Damon, and McConaughey down to size. I was prepared to do absolutely anything. On his eight-year-old adopted son Oscar, he said to me the other day, Dad, two o'clock, hot chick. He walks over, and I heard him say, Hey, my dad's Wolverine. That's his opening line. He brings them over and asks, Dad, can we have a few autographs for the girls? I'm like, am I pimping for my kids? If ever there was any doubt about whether or not people wanted their comic book heroes dark and vulnerable, I think X-Men, 2000, started this idea, and The Dark Knight, 2008, last year really confirmed it. Audiences want to see that, they want to see the superheroes' frailties, their doubts, and their battles. My idol was Olivia newton john I had her poster, and I would kiss it every day. I met her and told her that dot and she was like, great. On his father, he never took one's day off in his life. He had five kids he was bringing up on his own. If anyone deserved a day off it was my old man, but he never did. I learned that from him. When I came out of drama school I was like, I'm going to do anything I can just to keep working. In drama school, you do Shakespeare to movement to circus skills, to singing all in one morning. I know a lot of people hated it, but I reveled in it. I loved it. It's weird how it evolved. I can look back on my life, where there have been moments where things might have gone the other way. Everything is like stepping stones, and I've seen people I admire falter. We're all vulnerable. I was at a Warner Brothers event and all the stars were lining up backstage. Sylvester Stallone was in front of me, and, Clint Eastwood, was behind me, and we were all embarrassingly close. I turned around before the line went off and said, Good day Mr. Eastwood, Hugh Jackman. Clint replied, Yeah I know. I continued, By the way, I know we've gotta go but I've been told I occasionally look like you in films. Clint replied, You're holding up the line kid. I'll never forget it. I went on stage bright red and never looked at him again. Clint has never asked me to be in any of his movies or have an audition. On Father's Day gifts, the best is a handwritten card. I don't know where some of my awards are, but I can tell you exactly where those cards are. I treasure them most. On the look he wanted for X-Men Origins, Wolverine, 2009, I had this image in my head of De Niro in that remake of Cape Fear, 1991. You were terrified of that character from the moment he took his shirt off and you saw all the tats, you know he was this coiled spring that would rip your head off, no matter how nonchalant he acted. That's who Wolverine is. The things that I really cherish are the everyday moments, like sitting around cooking pancakes together on Sunday morning, or getting home after a tough day and my kids come up and give me a hug and remind me what's really important. On Les Miserables, 2012, Victor Hugo's novel is the greatest handbook any actor ever had for a job. But Annie, and Hathaway, brought research to it that went even further than Hugo about what it meant to be a woman in that time period, what it meant to be a prisoner. When I come home, my daughter will run to the door and give me a big hug, and everything that's happened that day just melts away. As a teenager I was explosively angry. I think rugby saved me, because that's just organized violence. Nine out of ten characteristics of Wolverine I don't share, but aggression is a primal thing and needs to be exercised in some way. When I was younger I was very explosive. I used to let most of it out playing rugby. I'm not as explosive now, but in a sense it's still there. It's in our DNA. Far better to have it in a controlled violent environment. So in a way, playing Wolverine is good therapy. On persistent rumors that he is gay, despite being married to Deborah Lee Furness for 17 years, if I was, I would be. I don't think to me, it's not the most interesting thing about a person anyway, but I do get frustrated for Deb, because I see Deb go, ah, this is crazy. On some level, it's a compliment, you know, because it only happens when you've got to a certain point in your career. On Australians working in Hollywood, we dominate. We're the majority now. It's always good to be an Aussie wherever you are. It's because Hollywood accepts us. Aussies over there, they just love them, they love the accent, they want to know everything about you, they really dig the Aussies. It's a good time to be an Aussie, 
I'm real proud of all the Aussies and real credit to how in Australia we train actors really well, and in general how Aussies will have a go and aren't afraid to pack up and have a crack. I understand at Marvel they've got the Avengers, they've got a lot of big things going on, but at some point I just find it almost impossible that there's not a way to bring Iron Man, all the Avengers characters, Wolverine, the X-Men characters, Spider-Man, and somehow get them in together. Salaries The Greatest Showman, 2017, $10 million Movie 43, 2013, $800 Les Miserables, 2012, $5 million Real Steel, 2011, $9 million Butter, 2012, $2 million Snow Flower and the Secret Fan, 2011, $1,500,000 X-Men Origins, Wolverine, 2009, $20 million <laughs>